Hey guys, it's Dr. L, and I want to give you a little bit of an introduction as you head into the videos and readings and assignments and work that I'm giving you are on, on the topic of prokaryotic cell structure. First of all, before you begin, take a close look at the reading and draw yourself a prokaryotic cell. And then look at the drawing and make a note that divides everything into two clumps or categories. One category should be interior of the cell, the other category should be cell envelope, okay? The cell envelope begins with the cytoplasmic membrane or the cell membrane, then it's the cell wall, and then outside of that is a layer that's called generically the glycocalyx, within which you can be a slime layer or you can be a capsule, okay? And then attached to the outside of the cell, also considered part of the, the cell envelope, you can have three kinds of protein-based appendages, flagella, fimbriae, or pili. And I gave you that in the order of largest to smallest, okay? That's the cell envelope. Everything from the cytoplasmic, mem cytoplasmic membrane out. The other clump or category is the cell interior. So the cell interior is of course full of cytoplasm, which is a rich, watery, but jelly-like substance full of proteins, protein enzymes, and it fills up the cell, it gives the cell volume and it carries the water, so it lets the cell do its biochemistry and metabolism, okay? And then in that cytoplasm, you've got the chromosome or chromosomes. Remember, prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus, they don't have any organelles, right? So there's no mitochondria, there's no nucleus, it's, there's no ER, etc., etc. Just the chromosome or chromosomes could have two, could have one, usually both circular in prokaryotic cells, and they're going to be anchored at a region called the nucleoid, okay? That nucleoid or that anchoring is defined by a primitive protein cytoskeleton, which won't really show up in your textbook, but it really is there, so trust me on that, okay? So in addition to that, we've got the, so we've got the cytoplasm, we've got the chromosomes, then we're going to have some ribosomes floating around in there, Ribosomes are the protein making machinery of cells. And then you might also have these like little insoluble chunks of material that are called inclusions. Those could be like extra nutrients that the cell is saving up like glycogen, or they could be waste products like hydrogen sulfide, and they might be floating around in there as well. So that's the cell interior. And then there's the cell envelope. Those are the two categories. Chunk everything up within that. It will help you with your learning and your note taking, okay? Um, also, other tips for learning this material, I like to kind of study and organize this information either going from the inside out or the outside in. Otherwise, I get too confused, okay? So that might help you. And also, I strongly encourage you to use a drawing. The more you draw and the more you make notes around a drawing, the better you'll remember this stuff. My final tip for you in learning about prokaryotic cell structure, and especially this is because this will make it fun, is to look for little weird examples or exceptions. Here's, here's one. If you look at the flagella, flag, flagella is plural, flagellum is singular. If you look at flag, a flagellum, usually they're on the outside of prokaryotic cells, although some don't have them at all. But one example of a really neat bacterium that's quite gross that has a flagellum on the inside is um, Borrelia burgdorferi, which causes Lyme disease, a really big deal in the Northeast, right, where we are. And that internal flagellum is corkscrew shaped, and it gives the whole cell a spirochete or corkscrew shape. And that corkscrew shape, in combination with the internal flagellum, lets it twist or corkscrew very powerfully into connective tissue. And so whenever I think about flagella, I think about Borrelia burgdorferi and the internal flagellum, and I remember that. And then that helps remind me that, you know, what a flagellum is and that it's important in motility, et cetera, et cetera. So those are a few tips. Um, take them or leave them. And um, good luck studying uh, all of this material and content that I've given you. It has a lot of application and relevance, so, so take it seriously and work hard because it will anchor your knowledge and help you to layer the rest of the microbiology content that you're gonna get taking this course um, as we move through. And I will talk to you soon, bye-bye.